Hi guys, this is Miss Hinky, and I'm here to introduce what we're doing for our final choice board for Visual Arts 1 this year. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, the last two choice board assignments involved a little bit more work and creation time. You had two formatives and a summative for each of those units, so we gave you two weeks each. This one is going to be a shorter one. So um, this is going to be our final assignment, and you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to work on it. That's the 11th through the 13th. So if you have Miss Holland, you'll be turning in your assignment on the 13th on its learning. And if you have me, Miss Hinky, you'll be turning in your assignment on Google Classroom on the 13th, and that will be your final assignment. Um, this is the choice board, and we have this shared in the planner on um, its learning for you. And you wanna read through this and be thorough, like just with the other choice boards so that you understand all the instructions and everything. Um, but I have a few notes on here up at the top. What about May 14th through May 22nd? Technically, that's still part of the school year. Well, since we're doing online learning, of course, all of our um, final exams, end of the year testing, those things were canceled, okay? Um, the only difference is if you have AP classes, of course. That's a little bit different. Um, so that final week of school, we just would have been taking end of course exams. Okay, end of the year exams. Um, so the school is not having us continue online learning assignments during that time. Um, we have two days that we're finishing up um, a little bit early. And so with that extra time, if you have missing online learning work, online learning work only, um, you can submit that to us by 520, okay? Um, if you have any missing online work, it is your responsibility to get that to us by May 20th. Ms. Holland and I have both sent out some emails, some um, emails to parents and whatever emails were associated with your Infinite Campus based on what we've done this year. Um, and it's your responsibility. You guys know how to use Infinite Campus and my kids know how to use Google Classroom. It's your responsibility to check up on your work. If you did something and you forgot to turn it in, if you try to turn it in after May 20th, it's not going to be accepted. So take five minutes, log on to Infinite Campus, Google Classroom, it's learning, um, and check and make sure if you've got work that you need to turn in to get a grade for it. Um, that is your responsibility. Um, so we had a really great time with you this year. Obviously this year, um, Ms. Holland and I have both taught for a really long time and we've never experienced ending the year quite like we did this year. And we miss being in the classroom with you guys a whole lot. We would way rather be at school than um, doing this from home because the student relationship aspect is why we like being teachers um, and we're missing that right now but we hope that you're doing well and that your family is doing well and you're staying healthy um, and we hope that you keep making art because art making is just a way to express yourself and to take the way that you're feeling inside and push that out of yourself. It, it gives you some stress relief or it's like journaling or creating poetry. It's a way to get things out um, and that's just good for you. So we hope that you keep making art regardless of whether you're signed up for art classes in the future or not. Um, and if you uh, post your art on Instagram, feel free to share it with us. Um, and you can tag us and I put our Instagram, most of you guys follow us already, but if you don't and you use Instagram, feel free to follow us even if you don't want to share your artwork. Um, this is Miss Holland's um, tag on Instagram and then this is mine, Art Room 1420. Um, okay, so you have three choices this week. All are going to be short assignments. I don't think necessarily that any of these, if you're doing it right, um, take more or less time than the others, but of course you can decide, you know, how much of a time investment you, you want to put in on these. I'm not going to click through each of the video tutorials just based on time, uh, but I will be giving like a short kind of synopsis of what you would do. So your first option is to create a color wheel of household objects. Okay, there's a video tutorial up at the top. You can click that link up there. Um, and you'll be taking two pictures of your finished color wheel. You must be in one of the photos with your color reel. So obviously you're probably gonna be setting this up on the floor, maybe on a table or something like that. You'll have to figure out a way to f pose yourself and get a family member um, to take the picture of you with it. Um, and then it says in the comments answer box, tell me which was the hardest color to find in your house. I know for me, for whatever reason, um, it was blue green. That's the hardest. Um, so you're gonna use at least 30 objects and we're not really giving extra credit, but you get a virtual high five if you can incorporate a pet into your color reel, okay? I'm just saying. If I incorporated my pet, it would be taking up the entire floor. All right, so there's another example there. So at least 30 objects, okay? 
Option two, recreating an artwork at home. So this was kind of um, started off, I believe, with the Getty Museum. Um, they put out a challenge for people to use just household objects in their home while people were in quarantine um, to pose like famous pieces of artwork that were in the museum and then use a hashtag and share it. And it became a thing that just caught on. Um, there's a presentation up at the top that you can look at. And um, you are going to have a few requirements for this. So if you choose this option, you're gonna turn in three things. The first would be a photo of your entire setup. So like if you did this in your bedroom, you'd get mom or dad or sister or brother or somebody to stand back like at your door and take a picture where they can see how you set everything up. The lighting, hiding certain things in your room that are not present in the painting or the drawing or whatever it is. Um, how you set things up, you in the pose trying to look like the painting, whatever. Um, and the second image is going to be your recreation of the artwork. So the final image that you would submit that looks as matchy-matchy with the artwork. Um, and then number three is the actual original painting like this one, the girl with the pearl earring, um, that you were trying to represent okay there are lots of examples of this on um, the link down here at the bottom the Getty blog and then there's also a ton of examples on the presentation so it needs to be you or one of your family members in the image I, there are some examples out on the internet of people using their dog um, but if you use someone other than you in the image then you need to be in image number one okay showing that it's set up in your home or outside of your home okay so if it's not you as the model we can't see that it's you and we know you because we taught you then you need to be in the image where you're setting things up or whatever in image one to get credit okay and if you have questions about that email miss holland or me and um, we will help you out um your last option which i think will be fun is um, going to be about edible art um, there's a presentation up at the top that you can click on with lots of different examples again, but you're going to be using food, edible objects, to create a plate of artwork. You can create a landscape, to take inspiration from a children's book, um, or recreate a famous piece of artwork. So here's an example below. Kandinsky is one of my favorite artists. He created um, artwork that was based on the way that music would look if it was artwork. So like sound and emotion and whatnot. Um, and then here's a landscape, or not, excuse me, not a landscape, a um, composition on a plate with food and color um, that represents the painting and then here's another little guy down at the bottom um, food again so totally different idea you can pick any of them that you choose and there's a lot more examples on the presentation um, but click through this and see what kind of things you want to do that um, includes compositional ideas and making things with like pop tarts and hot pockets and things that we have at home don't necessarily have to be a plate of food that looks like you would want to eat all the things together. It's more about the artwork, but you know, don't waste a ton of food when you're creating that. Try to create something that you'd actually want to eat too. And you could use that as an opportunity to make something like for your whole family, like a meal for your family, and that would be fun. So you would turn in pictures of that on um, Google Classroom where it's learning, depending on which teacher you have. So these are our three options. Again, you'll be working on this assignment May 11th through May 13th. Um, and if you have questions about any of this work, please let us know. There are no formative sketchbook assignments for this task. So you will look at the presentations, um, decide on which project you want to do, do the work, and then submit the photos. And that is the final grade. Okay. Um, we miss you guys. We hope you're doing well. We hope you're staying safe and healthy, and we hope you have an excellent summer. If you're not missing any online work, um, once you finish this assignment and turn it in, then you are done with VA1 for the year, and um, we hope you keep in touch, and we hope you stay well and have a wonderful summer, and we will talk to you soon.